It's but a, God has blessed this yeah. program so much from the very beginning. I was again, I was looking at at my records, and the, you know, we started out like twelve hundred dollars uh-huh. that was donated, mm-hmm. and I was going door to door these businesses and and companies and individuals, and that's how much we started with, and it has grown now to where we are having two hundred deer over two hundred deer donated. Which is now up to fifty dollars a deer that yeah. we have to pay. Yeah, the pro- so that's ten thousand dollars, and you know it's like, <laughs> okay, God, where am I going to get this money now? The award-winning Tennessee Wildcast is on the air with the latest on hunting, fishing, boating, wildlife watching, and all things outdoors. Make welcome your host, drummer and outdoor expert novice, Jason Harmon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Tennessee Wildcast. We thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching and listening. It's going to be a fun show for you today. Uh, Really excited about where we are, Don. Yeah, we are at WJJM Studios in... uh, there's a lot of history here uh, within this station, and, and a lot of history having to do with Wildcast, as a matter of fact. Exactly. It was in this very room that Wildcast Extra kind of came into, came to be. We'll, we'll tell a little bit more about that. But yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm really excited that we're here today. So w- WJJM is in uh, Lewisburg, Tennessee. Yes. Uh, the Power 94, as they uh-huh. go by. So yeah. I was listening as we drove in today, and... And excited to be here. So yeah. it's fun to do a show from a radio station. We're we're on twenty some odd different stations across the state. Appreciate all our radio partners out there, and appreciate uh, WJJM Jeff and Missy having us here today. Yes, yes, uh, great partners. Yeah. So uh, we're going to talk about hunters for the hungry today, uh, and probably get into a little bit of history. Uh, of yeah. Wildlife officers in this county. This is Marshall County, and uh, we've got Mark Ventura, the current. Uh, wildlife officer here and then Doug Lowry uh, retired officer and we'll get more into that and then Mr. Mike Adams um, with East Commerce Baptist Church uh, the wildlife ministry and and he's been a big part of uh, making the Hunters for the Hungry uh, auction and and fundraising and things happen to keep that program going so we're going to hit all that today it's a lot to talk about I'm learning about the wild game supper coming up too we want to get that date on the calendar yeah we'll have to make sure we uh, let everybody know when that is so uh, anyway, let's, uh, man, where to start? Uh, maybe right here to my right, Mark, uh, you uh, now the current wildlife officer here in Marshall County. Uh, tell us a bit about yourself, how you got started, and kind of uh, you took the reins from Doug, right, here I, in the county? I, I waited 17 years to come to this county. Ah. We finally got Doug out. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, had, I had a target on my back for several years. <laughs> um, yeah, I was hired in 2000 with the agency. Started out as a Region 2 uh, fisheries technician. Okay. With the, on the streams crew. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, electric fishing, all the rivers and streams in the, in the region. It was a great job. I enjoyed it. Uh, got to see all parts of the region. Uh, and in 2005, uh, promoted to wildlife officer. Uh, started in Cheatham County. Um from there, went to Rutherford and slowly made my way back <laughs> to pretty much home, yeah. southern middle Tennessee. Close so, enough, right? Yeah, all those other counties I worked in were great, but this was home. Uh-huh. And I was in Murray County just next door here for, for almost a decade. Okay, uh, yeah. Waiting on this guy here. Well, that's uh, how a lot of it happens, right? Uh, I mean, you start in different right. parts of the counties, and then you all that's move right. around, try to get closer to home if you can when that's things right. open up. That's right. And I owned, I owned a piece of property here. My wife worked here. So uh, this was the goal. Uh-huh. Uh huh. In this area, mm-hmm. uh, southern middle Tennessee. That's home. Cool. All right. Well, you took over Doug's spot. Doug, uh, we were chatting before the show. Thirty-three years with the agency, right? I was I was here for thirty-three years. I started in 1982. I was in uh, the wildlife department at UT Knoxville, and they hired six of us to be boating officers during the World's Fair in 1982. Oh wow. man! And so that's where I actually got my. Uh, feet wet with the agency and then once i graduated uh i was hired here in 1984 and i never left they they tried to get me to leave (laughs) but yeah i I was here for 33 years i know there's a lot of old jokes going around doug but i've still got my 1982 world's fair coffee cup that i drink out of regularly at my studio that was a unique time oh man it was very unique time we saw some unique 
things. <laughs> it's amazing the, the the things that show up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Oh man, yeah. You never know. You never know. Yeah, this day true. and age, either. Uh, Very true. So, Doug, you were uh, in this county for a long time, and 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 ran into Mike here. Tell us a little bit how y'all connected, and then we'll learn about Mike. Well, I first run into him on ball field. Yeah. We used to play uh, softball a lot. And then he goes to church with my, uh, went to church with my parents. And my mother still goes there. But anyway, uh, once I was looking for uh, volunteers, because it was this Hunters for the Hungry program, we'll get into that a little more. Mm-hmm. But I, it got to a point where I needed help. A right. whole lot of help. And Mike and his group there at uh, East Commerce Baptist Church, they just jumped in and saved the day. Uh, so they they really helped out a whole lot with the whole program and, and fundraising events. So that's how I met him, and, and that's how I've roped him into all this. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, tell us a little about yourself. Uh, you know, you're, we've mentioned the church and with the wildlife ministry, but... Um uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you've uh, you've been a hunter and fisherman all your life, been an outdoors person, or or uh, I know you mentioned you were in the military. Appreciate your service there. I retired uh, in '03, and that's really when I was able to start hunting and fishing and trapping a little bit more because you know tied up a lot prior to that. But after I retired, I was able to stay busy with that. But with the wildlife group, uh, when we started working with Hunters for the Hungry, we have 36 guys in the wildlife group. And they donate money monthly to pay for our wild game dinner that, uh-huh. that uh, maybe y'all be able to attend with us in February. But they pay for everything. Mm-hmm. Our game dinner, no one pays anything to come to it. We have our door prizes. We feed them anything that we kill or catch. Uh, and they just they work hard on this uh, auction. We hit every vendor or business that we can in Marshall County. And uh, they donate items to auction off. And in WJJM here, they're good enough to open the radio station one Saturday. Literally uh, open it, don't they? I mean, yeah, you guys have yeah. the, the materials and, and everything yeah. in right in here in this very room. Yeah, me and my wife, we come in the week prior and we start laying everything out, you know, trying to get it organized. And uh, then Missy and Jeff come in, Mark, Doug, uh, and start auctioning items on the the radio. But we had, I believe, about 140 items this year. Wow. uh, That that they were able to auction off. And and that's a result of, I mean, these guys get items to auction as well. Mm -hmm. But the guys in the wildlife group, they they really work hard to make this happen, try to raise money. It's a team effort, right? Yeah. Very much so. Absolutely. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's all to raise money for the Hunters for the Hungry program. We we kind of touched on a little bit, but but that's a program that the Tennessee Wildlife Federation has uh, put together, and and uh, they they manage that program. But you guys raise the money to help offset costs for processing of deer, and and then that that meat can go to the hungry families in the area, right in the county. And the cool thing yeah. about the Hunters for the Hungry program is typically it does stay local. Yeah. You know, and, and this is a great example of it right here because you guys are, are doing the work and the volunteers are contributing and the hunters are donating their deer. Mm-hmm. And uh, gosh, and it, and it stays right here locally. So that's, that's awesome. And this is a small rural community. And this program is well known by everybody. Mm-hmm. Even folks that I I meet in the summertime, I might be helping trap a critter in their yard or something. Mm-hmm. They ask me how the program's doing, and they don't even hunt or fish. Oh, neat. Uh, folks that I might unfortunately run into during hunting season that don't play by the rules they even ask how how can i give to the program yeah uh, everybody knows about this program it's a community program and they've done a great job over the years getting it going now it's well entrenched here mm-hmm. and uh, uh marshall county i've been here 23 years and it it, it just baffles me when, in times of need how people step up in this community and they may not have much of their own but they give and right they give and they give if they believe in it right and they believe in it yeah you know that was one of the first things that jeff mentioned to us when we came down here to wjjm initially and started talking about wild gas being on on the station he he brought up the hunters for the hungry program are you familiar with that and we were a little bit but 
but it's great to hear the details today. Right. Yeah, it's different. Uh, it works probably works a little bit different in, in different counties. Right. This this particular situation is y'all, uh, and forgive me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but y'all raise the money, and 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 you have that amount set aside to help offset that cost uh, of the processor or the hunter. Normally, the hunter pays the bill, right? They they want to donate for hunters for the hungry. They they pay the processing, and then. Well, uh, the, the federation has a limited amount of funds that okay. they that they would be able to pay a process, and that's how it really got started. Because at that time, the federation was only uh, able to give a participating processor like four hundred dollars. So much money, yeah. Okay. Well, the the cost to process one deer was at that time forty dollars. Or that was the amount that a processor was going to get paid. Right. And so that's only 10 deer. Mm-hmm. Well, when you have 100 deer donated, yeah. then, or, you know, you have so many more deer donated, then it gets to where they can't pay for it. Uh-huh. And that's why we had so many people wanting to participate, and the processor at that time could not keep up. And it was at it gets to a point where either the hunter is going to have to bring a deer in and pay the forty dollars, mm-hmm. or the processor is going to have to donate his time and energy and, and all the cost to process it himself. Sure, which neither one's going to do effectively. Yeah, I mean, you'll have some, you know. But so that's why we started this program because the cost. Uh, I mean, the Federation, it was a, it is a great program, but they just could not financially yep. uh, provide the funds for Yeah, meet the demand. Of, right, yeah. because the hunters are willing to donate, and it, it just was blooming out of, you know, over the limit. Yeah. And so uh, that's, that's why we, we started it. And it... I was looking back. I couldn't remember even when, but it was 2006 when we first started the program here in the county, and uh, and it's and it's blossomed and grown and, and <laughs> still with, going. with the help of of so many people. Uh, you know, it, it's really grown. Well, how many processors are involved here in the county? Just one. One. Okay. Just one right, right now, and his name is John Barron. It's B and B Processing. Okay. Um, and they do a they do a great job and what they'll what he'll usually do is just give us a total at the end of the year and then we uh take the money out of the account and pay that amount all right and unfortunately last few years we we have less and less processors around uh for example uh and correct me if i'm wrong if y'all know I, i believe there's no no deer processors in williamson county Okay. So we John gets a lot of deer also from other counties that come in here. They know about his program. They know about his processing plant, and they'll they'll bring deer from Franklin, Centerville, Columbia. So he's a busy man. He's a busy man. Yeah, you yeah. know, you hear stories of uh, you know uh, how this processor is a great place to go. You know, so you people might jump county to county and go different places uh, just because of the right. the word of mouth. You know how great they are, and especially if they don't have any right there nearby. Right. So. Right. And and they want to do something with the animal. They don't want to waste it. Right. Ninety nine percent of people don't don't waste any part of it. Mm-hmm. They want they want to give it. They want to make sure it's used. That's good. So that gives them, that gives them an outlet to to do that. Yeah. So, so uh, somebody in the county, how do they how do they uh, take advantage of the of the uh, the meat? How do they get that meat? All they have to do is field dress the animal, take it to John Barry, and he'll process it at no cost to the hunter and then they contact there's three agencies in marshall county that actually assist with distributing the meat okay uh last year we had 208 deer eight thousand pounds of meat that was distributed here in marshall county that that john had processed but there's three different and it i think it changes we pick up some some drop out but each year we have about three agencies that actually distribute the meat to families in marshall county there's church food banks, um, food groups, and then you know all kinds of uh, uh, charitable groups that want to use that meat to feed uh-huh. the the needy people of around this area. Sure, and, and they always have access to John's plant uh, facility to go retrieve that meat to get it to somebody. 
Awesome. It's all ground up in the burger. Uh huh. Because when when I first was looking at at, the, at what we're doing now, you know, I was asking some of the uh, people who were distributing deer meat. They had deer meat donated to them, and he said, "I don't want deer meat." And I said, "Why not?" He said, "Because they'll pick through it." Oh, you know, people yeah. will pick through, yeah. and they'll find the best cuts. Uh huh. And so the 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 best avenue was grind it all up burger. There's so many things you can do with burger, and that's how the meat is processed. So all hunters for the hungry here in, in Marshall County is ground up into burger, and they can use it soups, stews, chili, you know, chili, yeah. spaghettis, all kinds. Uh huh. So and even with 208 deer, we ran out of meat by end of march Uh uh-huh wow so there's a great demand for it so you would encourage folks in the area to 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 donate yeah and john he'll encourage them uh to to donate uh i I encourage them it's a great program and we we do want as many deer donated as possible but uh, I guess we're gonna have to find <laughs> new avenues to pay for it. Right? Here we go. Yeah. Yeah, it's but a, God has blessed this yeah. program so much from the very beginning. I was again, I was looking at at my records, and the, you know, we started out like twelve hundred dollars uh-huh. that was donated, mm-hmm. and I was going door to door these businesses and and companies and individuals, and that's how much we started with. And it has grown now to where we are having 200 deer, over 200 deer donated, which is now up to $50 a deer that yeah. we have to pay. Yeah. The pro- so that's $10,000. And, you know, it's like, <laughs> okay, God, where am I going to get this money now? And, and he has provided, and this community has just rolled with it well it lays, lays it lays it on the hearts of, of of the station here to help and, sure. and make make a way to do the auction and then the 36 member group yep. that you've got going and uh it's amazing how things come together when, when but they've the had right mindset i mean there's a triathlon coming up for hunters for the hungry at our wild game dinner that we have in february we will raffle off an item uh we've Henry rifles, muzzle loaders, uh, shotguns, shotguns, Bash Pro Shop gift cards, <laughs> whatever you know we come up with, we'll mm-hmm. raffle that off and give it away at the game dinner each year, and that usually raises a fair amount of money. The triathlon does pretty well. This auction, I think, though, the auction is probably the big. Oh, it's, it's that we have. That's the main yeah. draw. Yeah, it, for it has funds. It's yeah. nuts. It's it's crazy. <laughs> it is. This year oh, it's fun, but it, it's just it's it's right. crazy. Just how much over we started. Uh, well, it was 2006 we started the program. 2010 we started the run. We we needed more mm-hmm. help with that, and then with the auction, it was 2012 when we started it, and Jeff and Missy agreed. And they were excited about it, and and it has just. Here we go, you know, yeah. here we are grown with it. So it, it's been fun. And, you know, for three guys that look like us, radio is perfect. <laughs> it's the perfect very avenue. Much, yeah. Very much so. Yeah, Jason and I hear that face for radio a lot. I don't know, you know, what, what that really means. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. We, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, Mike, the, uh, you know, back to the Wild Game Supper. And, and I was amazed at the, the, uh, quality of speakers you've been Absolutely. able to attract yeah. to it and i mean they're motivational speakers you know that they, they come in and and i'm sure that that brings a lot to the table too as far as donations you know uh speaking to to the needs and the uh motivation of what these folks are are all about oh we've had some great speakers but but you know in all honesty the 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 speakers that we get uh it'd be nice if i could claim credit uh for getting these guys but Cleve mcclary is a uh, uh, he spoke years ago, and uh, he knows everybody in the world, I believe, because <laughs> I can call him and say, Look, Lee, I need a speaker. Uh, let's call Hank Parker, or let's call uh, General Jerry Boykin. Uh, he's what there, there's a NASA astronaut, Doug Wheelock, down in Houston, that's uh, on the space station 178 days a couple years ago. He's let's get him, wow. and you know, these guys, Joe I Gibbs. Re- 
Joe Gibbs is one that, that we were trying to get uh, with our game dinner in February and some issues that came up. You know, Daytona began, you know, it, it kind of created some issues this year. Uh, Cleves mentioned Oliver North. But it's – it's uh, uh, things just kind of fall into place for us. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I've, I've talked to Mark. God takes care of dogs, kids, and, and idiots. I don't know where we fall. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he's taking I, care I, of I'm us. I'm in all of them. I say kids. <laughs> but yeah. he's taking care of us. Uh, and uh, uh, this wildlife group that we have, they, they never cease to amaze me. I mean, you know, it just – uh, we'll have 350, 400 people at the game dinner. These 36 guys show up at 6 in the morning. We start cooking, and they'll feed all those people in the afternoon. Y'all wow. need to come. Yeah. You can yeah. eat anything yeah. from elk to raccoon to, to deer to fish, yeah. muskrat, pheasant, muskrat, dove, quail. But then, you know, I think I told y'all before we started, if it's legal, borderline legal, <laughs> <laughs> no, if it's, if it's legal, and and we'll take it and we'll cook it. Uh, barbecue it or something, right? <laughs> you you find a way. It's to amazing what barbecue can do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can make just about anything taste good. But it's uh, and I these had guys barbecued coyote one time, and I thought, hmm, that ain't bad. <laughs> <laughs> but we uh, th th those guys work hard, and you know it's amazing we can have thirty six guys out there cooking all day, and there's never crossword. Greatest bunch of guys I've ever been associated with in my life, mm. uh, and they really work hard. They take this wildlife for the wild game dinner. They work hard on it. The hunters for the hungry. Uh, they've just taken it, and they'll. I mean, it's it's amazing what they do. Oh, what's some other things that the ministry does throughout the year? Anything that y'all y'all have hunts or get-togethers and things? Well, I don't know if there's a nice way to put it. The, the wild game dinner is a men's only event. There are no women there at all. Uh, the ladies of the church cook all of our side items and desserts, mm. and they bring it to the game dinner during the day and leave. And, you know, they after a couple of years of that, they – you know, they, they kind of uh, threw it up at me, you know, that they were working really hard. So we have a fish and a frog leg dinner for the ladies of the church, uh, usually in September. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, it keeps us all friends. <laughs> we, feed, we feed them fish and frog legs, and they continue to take care of us because we couldn't do it without the ladies oh, anyway. No. That's right. Yep. So they provide all the desserts, and, and again, uh, Doug and Mark both can tell you, it's it's unbelievable the amount of food that we have, and oh, the I ladies bet. provide that for us. And thousands of dollars of door prizes. Mm. Yeah. 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 And again, we'll raffle off an item for Hunters for the Hungry that night as well. Yeah. So... Uh, and, we, and it's come a long way because I remember when Doug first started, you know, at the game dinner, he'd sit at the foot of the steps and sell tickets on a muzzleloader that we would give away. Uh -huh. So we've we've come up with a few better items that we can we can give away with. They, they now let Doug sit at a table. <laughs> He's moved up from the steps to the table. I, I do, yeah, I do get to sit at the table, but I'm still in another room. <laughs> Works uh, better that way. <laughs> well, Mike's group also, um, uh, there's numerous events we have in the county, you know, that, that pop up uh, uh -huh. during hunting season for, for, for youngsters, young sportsmen, and women's groups, and wounded warriors, and things like that. Mike's, Mike's group steps up and, and, and are always willing to, t to take a kid awesome. uh, on a hunt or off for a farm to take somebody um, i have a youth uh, deer event mm -hmm. i started a couple years ago in the county his group shows up and and they help the kids with the activities and 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 whatever they need to do mow the grass before we go or before we get there or whatever they're all willing to do that the the triathlon slash 10k slash 5k for hunters for the hungry we mentioned that doug started in 2010 uh, is an event that raises several thousand for the program. Also, we have it at Henry Horton State Park. Okay, yeah. And people have their choice to enter into the triathlon, which is a three three mile run, three mile uh, kayak paddle down the Duck River, and then a three mile bike ride. Okay. Um, and then, or they have a choice of five k or ten k to run. Uh, and we have it at the park, and uh, his group shows up there, and they help people load their kayaks in and out of the river, and and uh, so their group helps with 
any kind of event that we need them. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. And for those of, uh, of you who don't know, uh, Henry Horton's just up the road a little bit. It is. It's a in little north of North town Marshall here. County. Yes, sir. Yep. Great, great state park. They've got shooting and yeah, and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, they got a range. And yeah. um, me and uh, Mike helps me with my hunter ed class. He's a volunteer. In fact, he's the Region Two Volunteer Hunter Education Instructor of the Year. Oh, congratulations! Awesome. Uh, and uh, oh, keeping secrets. Hunters. Hunter Education Officer of the Year. Yeah. All right. Awesome. awesome. What a team. And, well, it, it, it's like everything else in the county. We work as a team, and me and Mike tag team on the class. There's not a specific thing he teaches or I teach, but we, we trade off. He gets sick of hearing me talk, so he, <laughs> My turn. he pretty much does this number here, and, and then he can talk. But uh, uh, but that's how we do things here. But, uh, um, uh, yeah, Mike, Mike has been – helpful to me coming into the county too and and his group and uh i still i still call doug every now and then too with hey doug uh, you know this guy i heard something <laughs> about this guy, or that guy. <laughs> i'm sure doug's got some stories of uh, being in the field uh, uh would you want to share one or two or or, or what do you do it or maybe <laughs> oh you just opened up a whole can of <laughs> my, my, that you my can't wife, share <laughs> my wife says i talk too much <laughs> well what are you doing now what are you doing now that you retired and and uh Enjoying life, I'm sure. Well, I I tell you what, two years ago my wife retired, so that in itself tells you something. Uh -oh. um, I, I see a list coming. Yeah. yeah, we we gutted our barn. Wow. Yeah, took a perfectly good barn <laughs> and made a venue out of it. So now we have a wedding venue ah. at our barn or event venue, yeah. and then we bought two old grain bins, tore them down, took brought them to our place. Put them back up and made living quarters out of them. Huh. And we have just got done, and last week we put them up on Airbnb, and we got people staying in them. All right. All right. So All right. That's neat. My, you know, they're, they're go they can be used along with the wedding venue, that kind of stuff. But uh -huh. that's what I have been doing. Not hunting, fishing, and trapping. <laughs> that I told my wife that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. You know. <laughs> All but, those years in the field, you know, you, as an officer, you don't get as much time outdoors as you'd like. Well, right, that's very right. true. You know, but. Uh, that's very true. Maybe you could slip in a few deer hunts or something. Hey, like it, it, the first, uh, well, before my wife retired, <laughs> uh, I had a, I was fishing all the time. I got to trap, <laughs> I got to hunt, and then, but now that we're done, you know, I'm gonna get right back, back into, into it. it. But yeah, it's great. Uh, yep. It's been good. It's been good. Oh, great, great. Uh, we'll have to check those places. That uh, yeah, exactly. venue out. That's pretty neat. Goose Creek cool Farm. See. Goose Creek Farm. All right. Yeah. Well, look them up. Uh, go check it out, guys. Thank you for uh, hanging out with us. Thanks to WJJM for having us here. Yeah, it's been fun. Sure has been. Uh, thank y'all. Keep up. Thank Come back. Yeah, we will. We will keep up the good work on on the the hunters for the hungry and the auction and all y'all are doing here in the county. It's it's great to hear how y'all are, are helping out people and uh it's uh, a blessing to a lot of people i'm sure oh, man so we and enjoy we'll it. let you know when the wild game dinner schedule good get february yeah. yeah get that on the calendar let us know we'll, we'll uh, make a point to be there you bet you bet <laughs> <laughs> all right well this is tennessee wildcast uh once again thanks to wjjn the power 94 for having us if you want to listen to this show on the, that station uh, you can listen to the wildcast extras at 7 40 a.m and 4 40 p.m every day and then on saturdays listen to the whole show at 8 a.m so yeah uh we thank them again for having us and, and having us on their network and thank you to all the other stations out there that have us so we will uh see you next time all right Thanks Thank for tuning in. Stay connected with TWRA by visiting our website at tnwildlife.org. And follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Hey, it's all about Tennessee wildlife. It's what we do. Tennessee Wildcast will be on the air again next week. We'll see you then. <laughs>